Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 19 of KSP Road to Exploration, and today we start around Duna with our little Kestrel 1 probe, the first uh, interplanetary probe we ever sent, which arrived at Duna a little while ago, and, uh, well, we've uh, gotten a lot of use out of, it, out of it, and now we're getting a little more. Uh, we're performing our burn to take us out to Ike. A pretty small burn because we left it in a pretty elliptical orbit, and it's pretty easy to get into orbit of Ike because it's uh, quite a quite a big moon. It's I think about the third the mass of um, of, of Duna, which is weird. Well, because in in real life, you know, uh, Phobos and Deimos, uh, the moons of Mars, and they're very small. But uh, yeah, um, obviously this isn't uh, our universe. It's a very different one. But I uh, do just about manage to get a connection because I'm using remote tech to. Uh, perform my capture burn. It's a little late because Duna was in the way, because there's a lot of things in this system that are really big. So anyway, while I'm here, I thought I'd uh, grab a little science. Um, I try to do it there, but then I time warp so, I, uh, <laughs> so it doesn't register, because these things don't happen instantly. Uh, you can see at the top left, it says D plus 91 seconds. That's how long it takes for a signal to get from uh, here to, from Duna to Kerbin and back. Um, it's actually should be double that, because this is just uh, one way. But anyway, yeah, so I have to wait a little while for these things to register. Um, it doesn't, luck it luckily doesn't affect things like um, firing up engines and moving, or it would be really hard, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so we get a little science, and that completes one of our missions. It's also nice to get some science, but we get about 80 grand for that. Well, that's one of the missions we have around Ike, one of the reasons we're getting here. Um, we also got... I think uh, we did get uh, the mission for um, getting into orbit around Ike, and we also have this uh, mission to put a satellite in this specific orbit, so I thought I might as well do it with this probe, however, um, the mission required a, mis uh, a materials bay on the probe, which I didn't put on here because I wanted it to be light. Uh, looking back now, I definitely do have the Delta V. I haven't even used the fuel on the probe yet, but anyway, I didn't uh, put one on here, so, well, that's a bit of a shame, but whatever. Uh, I, I realized this after going up here, losing connection. Oh no, I do connect, get connection. It's, yeah, because I, uh, Ike's quite big. It's kind of hard to do that. Anyway, so I actually end up, I think I do put it in the right orbit, and then I'm like, god damn. So I've put it in a bit of an annoying orbit, but it still has quite a lot of Delta V, so I could do quite a few more things. I'm thinking of maybe just dropping it slightly into the atmosphere and getting a little science. Anyway, what I'm making, doing here is recovering a first stage, which I landed um, after a flight getting this onto its trajectory. However, the uh, game crashed and I lost the footage, so we don't get to see the launch. But it was atop a Pulsar 3 vehicle, my new big one. And we landed the first stage again, which is really great. And we're, uh, yeah, just pushing this all the way into orbit. Now, this is quite an important payload. This is the Hermes 1 expan uh, Hermes station expansion. It's got a huge amount of life support, a new crew cabin, and a little secondary payload, which will be attached to our redstone uh, no, our Red Origin 3 um, vehicle, so that we can, uh, it's a scientific payload, so that when we land on planet, uh, on moons, we can get scientific data, which is good, because when we go there, we do want to get science, because I haven't, I feel like I haven't been doing enough science recently, we're not advancing our technology, and at some point, we're going to want to send uh, Kerbals far into the solar system, so we are going to need technology uh, to do that. Anyway, so yeah, here we are on our trajectory, uh, looking pretty good. The Pulsar uh, 3 is so useful. It, it does have a pretty good lifting uh, capability, and it is quite easily reusable. It's actually much nicer than the Pulsar 2, the one I use for the uh, crew vehicle, the Ares 1, um, which, uh, yeah, it's just nicer because I don't have to do all the fairing stuff. It's just quite a sturdy vehicle. It also has six engines, which is rather nice. I might uh, create a final version of this uh, craft with seven engines and make it much taller, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Well, I guess we'll... Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, but anyway, yeah, just got to move into the station, kind of my, well, actually not my usual thing. I usually do an orbit to get there, but I put myself on a pretty good trajectory. Anyway, cutting ahead, because it was quite a long um, encounter, and I had to do a bunch of things by moving one of the vehicles. So here is just the docking of this. That is our station upgraded, and uh, now putting this Ares 2 back here, because I had to move that because it was on the wrong docking port. But that uh, payload also has multiple docking ports, so we can have more things docked at this station. Anyway, uh, cutting ahead again, because it's all fairly laborious things, um, uh, in this section at least. Uh, we're with our f second stage, just deorbiting, and uh, just, yeah, and then this is just a quick shot of it. Flaming through the atmosphere, which is quite nice. I am not going to show all of these in future. Just I'm going to probably do this sort of thing, just kind of show you what happened without having to watch all of the footage. And here I'm just firing up the engine so that I don't hit land, because it's much easier to land on ocean. And here we are, landing beautifully on the ocean with our drogue chutes and our main parachutes. And we'll recover that for, I think, about... 
7,000 ish because we're quite far away from the KSC still. Um, we'll need to work on that. I do know roughly where I need to be to land next to the KSC. Oh, yeah, a little under 6 grand, so that's a bit disappointing. But um, still, we recovered the stage. That's uh, keeping costs down, which is always a good thing, and we'll recover the rest of this and move on to greater things. Today, well, actually, not greater things. Uh, this is a, a smaller thing. This is a little tiny rocket, um, which is taking a satellite to the moon because we need a satellite around the moon because we're being paid for it. And this is actually an attempt at a small reusable rocket. You'll notice it has parachutes on it and a small fairing at the top. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do that, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, because this is a very experimental rocket, but it's uh, very cheap anyway, because it is quite small. But anyway, yeah, we get this annoying flip out, because I haven't used small vehicles in a while, and I forgot this happened, and it lasts for ages, and this was really frustrating, but I do get control, but may have lost uh, enough velocity to totally screw up this mission. And also, it slowed me down enough that I won't be able to recover that uh, first stage, because I won't have time to land it, which totally sucks, but, well, as is the way with things, I guess. So we lose that stage. So it was a bit of a failure, but I did want to see if I could make a small reusable rocket. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get this all set up for uh, heading on to the moon. And I've also put my apoapsis a little high. This was a pretty terrible mission, naturally. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, just try and uh, get to the moon and put it in the right orbit and get paid lots of money so that I can fund my crazy adventures. Um, which is pretty much what this has become, me doing little missions to fund my non-profit adventures. Anyway, uh, I've just got to put it on the right trajectory, and there we go. That looks like we should encounter the moon. After this stage has burned out, there is an RCS engine on the probe, which we will use to uh, get into orbit. Um, and our satellite network is holding strong today, keeping our connection pretty much non-intermittent. -in it's uh, pretty consistent. We're going to get a pressure report because I've uh, from the moon because I haven't done that before because you can get pressure data from space now. It just kind of tells you that, oh yeah, you're in space. What are you doing? Anyway, so the stage burns out and I fire up the monopropellant engine and it doesn't work because these radial tanks, you can't uh, burn fuel from the radial tanks with a non-radial RCS engine, which totally sucks. So this is lost and a waste of money. We're also using a new cool square probe core. But anyway, here's a shot. It will hit Kerbin, so we won't um, have too much Kessler syndrome issues. But that is a disappointment. I didn't know you couldn't use radial tanks. Actually, I did know that. That's happened on my Ares vehicle. But I didn't think about it. And I don't have small non-radial tanks. So I guess we'll have to attempt that again at another point. Anyway, another Ares 1 launch. Yes, there are a lot of these because getting people to the station and getting them off the station is kind of just a really crazily difficult, well, not difficult, just a logistical nightmare, especially since my vehicles can only launch three people. I am going to work on a big SSTO at some point so that I can just do one of these, like, occasionally. Anyway, there goes the launch escape system, and we're going to propel ourselves into orbit. Pretty standard. We've done this quite a few times. We'll just get this all set up to fall back. It does spin quite a lot, but uh, we do need to slow it down so the parachutes can pull. That is the constraint of the Ares, uh, the um, Pulsar 2 vehicle, is it's uh, not quite as, it doesn't have quite as much reserve fuel as the Pulsar 3, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Anyway, let's get onto the station and hopefully not lose that first stage, but I can tell you that we do. Um, which totally sucks, uh, because that's like 20 grand, no, it's more like 15, but 15,000 funds gone. But we've reused so many of those stages that eventually you're going to lose one. It sucks, but, you know, we'll live. Anyway, so, onto the station. We need to take these, uh, this crew to the station. Two of them are tourists. Yes, we're doing more tourism. Um, these people want to fly past Minmus and land on Minmus. Well, one of them wants to land, one of them just wants to orbit. Um, so we will work on that. We have the vehicles. So let's get rid of our first sta uh, second stage that will hopefully land and uh, move on into the station. Uh, but yeah, again we have some secondary payloads. Um, what we're using here is uh, the same things we launched last time out of our Ares, these uh, little uh, low orbit communication satellites. I'm going to fire one of them prograde and one of them retrograde so they will slowly diverge and give me good coverage and low Kerbin orbit. Um, so yeah, there we go. Let's just deploy their solar panels. That's uh, low uh, orbit communication one and low orbit communication two. Oh no, it's three and four. There was also one attached to the first thing I launched, the uh, ex um, the ex expansion to the uh, to the Hermes station. That actually, the little RCS tug, that had some antenna on it. So now we have four of those little satellites and a bunch of other little ones that do good stuff for us. But anyway, yeah, just a matter of moving into the station now. Um, we're actually on a pretty bad trajectory. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we kind of lost our uh, our encounter node last time, so I had to kind of eyeball it and didn't go that well. So we're just going to uh, 
try and move in, and we have a, we have quite a lot of delta V. I've actually brought quite a lot more monopropellant this time. There's actually loads in here because uh, it's doing a monopropellant, monopropellant resupply since it doesn't need to bring up more life support because last time, the last launch we brought up like two years worth of life support um, on the um, on the expansion. But yeah, you can see there's a little monopropellant tank in there. Um, the expansion also had some monopropellant tanks so that I can store more on the station. It was a it's a pretty needed. Um, uh, a pretty needed uh, expand, uh, expansion um, because it has more docking ports, more monopropellant, more life support, and more space for Kerbals. Now the annoying thing is um, we're having more trouble with radial RCS tanks. I have to keep transferring it into the capsule for these engines to be able to use it, which totally sucks, but well, it's not that much of a problem, but it's just a little annoying. But anyway, yeah, let's try and use one of these new docking ports and put this on here and then we can take our crew to Minmus at some point, probably, well, next episode, because we do quite a lot of things in this episode, and I am putting a lot of things into episodes now, it used to be I'd get about an hour of footage into an episode, but now it's more like an hour and 45 minutes, because, well, a lot of it's just stuff you see quite a lot, so I just cut through that, um, because I want to, I want to be, you know, moving forward with this series without having to go to, like, episode a thousand, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, that's Ares Doc Tom, I'm just going to resupply the, um, monopropellant, um, and yeah, so there's uh, just filling up out of this tank. This uh, vehicle is really useful for obviously bringing crew and just a little bit of a uh, little bit of either life support or fuel or something. Probably monopropellant because I have a big fuel um, resupply in the works, which you will see this episode, which is quite cool. Uh, anyway, so cutting ahead, this is me just reusing the uh, landing the first stage, uh, second stage um, near the KSC. I, I did pretty well. Uh, you can see over there that's just the KSC. Uh, yeah, the D-Orbit, you've literally seen that this episode, so... But anyway, it, yeah, everything went fine, it's pretty pretty, pretty routine, and it's quite easy to land these in a pretty good place, because you have all the time in the world, because with the first stage you've got to beat it to orbit. But anyway, I did lose a tiny bit of footage, and this is just, just it landed on the beautiful ocean, and let's recover it. And we actually get a significant amount of money back for this, because we get almost, uh, there's a little bit of a recovery cost, obviously, we get... Uh, I think, what, like 98%, 97%, and we get a little over 6 grand for that, and that's the smaller second stage, so that's that's really good. Um, and we're just going to recover, obviously, these struts, uh, launch struts, and move on to something a little cooler. Yes, this is the EVE probe, Kestrel 2 headed to EVE, and we're just grabbing a little bit of science from around the... Uh, around the sun, and you can see there's some weird um, UI glitching there, but whatever, anyway, so... A little more science is always good, and we actually got a world first for that. We can see in the top right there's a mission that's been completed. It's a world first for uh, sending data back from around the sun, which apparently I've never done. But anyway, um, we need to do our little, uh, well, our inclination change, I guess, uh, and fine-tune so that we actually hit EVE. Well, not hit EVE, get really close to EVE. Um, so we'll be doing that with this second stage, and um, yeah, we're communicating with the ground COM2, uh, which is... Uh, the, the little ground probe I put on the ground, which seems more reliable than the actual standard communications thing on the ground, which is the tracking station. I don't know why, but it's yeah, it's just good to have. Um, and eventually you do need to do that anyway, because the tracking station has surprisingly limited range. Um, but anyway, I think it's, uh, well, high time we did our inclination change, which is, well, just a matter of firing up our engines. But it is quite serene out here. You can see... Uh, Lots of stars in the background, and you can probably even see um, Kerbin using the distant object enhancement mod. Often, when there's really uh, prominent points of light in the sky, that's other planets, which is really cool. I mean, it is a really cool mod. It does uh, do some fun stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it's uh, yeah looking good. It will be nice to send another probe to another planet. Obviously, this will uh, well be exploring orbit of Eve and probably Gilly. I could probably land on Gilly with this. Well, I definitely land. It's pretty easy to land on Gilly. I I hear actually um, from the great. Oh well, here we are doing our burn, um, just getting into position. But yeah, I hear that um, uh, from the great Scott Manley in one of his streams. He was saying that um, uh, that the uh, gravity on Gilly is actually less than if you hack gravity on Kerbin, which is pretty cool. Anyway, it appears I've slightly overburned here, so I will need to turn around because I wouldn't want to miss Eve now. That would be. Rather ridiculous, um, because my Eve window won't come around for quite a while now. 
um, which may cause me to increase my uh, lo dis uh, time between launches because there's not a lot of cool transfer windows coming up. So uh, yeah, but I have a lot of stuff doing the Kerbin system, uh, and it will be much cooler. We're going to be putting bases places, obviously. I need to put a moon base down. I need to do a lot of more moon stuff, and I need to be getting more technology before I think about going to other places. I was going to send a probe to Jewel, but then I realized I don't have the antennas, so that kind of sucks. But anyway, uh, just going to pull down pull down the orbit so it's closer to Eve. It looks kind of polar right here, and I'm actually noticing here that um, it's going into the wrong direction to rendezvous with Gilly, so I'll have to fix that at some other point. Um, and I would prefer it to be equatorial, because I do want to rendezvous with Gilly at some point. But anyway, that is that. Um, so yeah, that will be getting to Eve in 60 days, so maybe even next episode. Probably next episode, because that's like, what, four launches? Anyway, we need some more fuel on the station. We've used most of our fuel, and... Uh, we need to put some up there, but obviously we can't just keep uh, sending up expendable vehicles because they're quite expensive. Like, yes, I reused the rocket, but the uh, vehicle itself is uh, on top is very expensive. So I have designed a fully reusable refueling thing, except for the nose cone and the fairing. Um, there's a tiny little fairing at the top, but I've also designed this to not need a fairing um, to launch because... Uh, because that's just quite a lot of mass, and this is relatively aerodynamic. Uh, you saw I used a little bit of fuel out of the top tank there. That's because, um, well, we needed to... Uh, well, well, we, we needed a little more fuel. Uh, we didn't need that much fuel to land, so I thought I might as well use it on launch. Anyway, that's the uh, Pulsar 3 first stage uh, jettisoned, and we'll land that later, uh, once this has got its trajectory to the station. It is quite a utilitarian vehicle. It's basically just... Um, just Well, it's made to be reusable and to take that tank of fuel up, that kind of what, the 720 units of liquid fuel. And yeah, it'll uh, move up there and dock. It has all the correct antenna to be in orbit by itself. It's a bit, pretty useful vehicle, and I will be landing every bit of this vehicle, um, other than, obviously, like, nose cones and such, which you'll see how all of that works in a little bit. Anyway, we're on, the right, on a roughly right trajectory now, and now we need to land the first stage, because this is a very expensive bit of kit, and we uh, have already lost two first stages uh, this episode, the uh, Pulsar 2 one sending up the Ares, and that little moon rocket, that little bastard moon rocket. Anyway, so we need to slow down so that we can pull our chutes, that's why I keep fuel in the uh, tanks for the engines. And there we go, looking pretty good, and now we just need to do the final slow down to touch down on the engine, on the ocean on the engine. Well, I guess we are touching the engines down on the ocean. And now we need to go and fetch our, um, our fuely thing back. Uh, it's in a slightly lower orbit. Our oh, fuely thing. <laughs> it's actually called Eris-1. No, what is it? Yeah, Eris-1, um, after, uh, the, I think it's like the god of, uh, <laughs> The chaos, which this is absolutely not chaotic. It's a pretty well planned vehicle, but I, I, you know, I just like the name. And also, I think there is a um, little, uh, uh, little dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt uh, called Eris. Anyway, to attach the nose cone. I think that's quite cool. And get rid of the fairing to reveal the docking port and such, which I do like how that works. Uh, but yeah, I think there is. It's either Iris or Eris um, in uh, the Kuiper Belt, which is a little bigger than Pluto. Um, and no one complains that that's not a planet. It is quite a weird thing. Everyone's like, oh no, Pluto's a planet. It's like, you can say what you want, but it's just not. I, that's just, that's totally unscientific to be like, it's a planet because I want it to be a planet. Anyway, the whole rendezvous, you know, that took a while and it was fairly standard and uneventful. So here's me just docking this to the station. Um, and, tra well, we'll be transferring the fuel in. And yes, it has a heat shield on the back because obviously it has to go... Um, well, it has to go back through an orbital re-entry and doesn't have an engine to protect itself, so yeah. Um, and there we go, docked onto the station. And let's just put the fuel into the tanks, um, because, well, it's always just good to have fuel so we can go to Minmus uh, next episode. I was going to do it this episode, kind of ran out of time, um, but we will be taking a Kerbal out there and we'll be doing a lot of science, it'll be grand. At some point I do want a base on Minmus. Anyway, yeah, so I do need to refuel the monopropellant on this, though, because it does need to de-orbit, um, which is uh, quite a serious task, but uh, this uh, station now carries quite a lot of monopropellant. And here's us just landing the second stage. Yes, um, I'll be bringing back the fueling uh, vehicle next episode or something. It doesn't really matter. Um, it'll come back at some point. Uh, but yeah, again, and that's the third successful uh, second stage landing of the episode, which is rather nice, because we had... Uh, two failed first stage uh, like landings. But yeah, it's getting it's getting pretty routine to reuse a whole rocket, which is pretty awesome. So let's just recover this and yeah, get a little money back. I think I landed this uh, a little off the coast, uh, 
pretty much the same place I landed the last one, um, quite far away from the KSC. But anyway, yeah, we'll get, um, yeah, how much are we going to get back for that? What am I looking at science for? Yeah, about seven grand, so not bad. But anyway, yeah, I, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this has been episode 19 of KSB Road to Exploration. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.